Hi and welcome to Cars and Coffee Stories. Today we are in Los Angeles at Autoconduct and I'm here with Kobe. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Kobe has, I believe, the craziest van I've ever seen. Tell us more about it. Uh, this is a 1963 Ford Econoline. It's been slightly customized. Um, it's the first one that was set on the ground that's actually drivable. Um, and it started, started maybe 10 years ago and it's been on the road for seven years. Where came the idea from? Why the, this car? Uh, the main reason for this car was because I designed t-shirts, I self-published a photo magazine, I make silkscreen prints, so this was going to be a van that I could sell my stuff out of at car shows. When I look at the car, I mean you changed it like everything the interior exterior it sits on the body right and is there a point where you say okay that's it I don't touch it anymore or is it constantly changing you wake up in the morning and say okay today it's the seats or whatever no uh, once it was finished it was finished I haven't really changed anything except uh, it debuted at the Grand National Roaster Show in 2011 and the only thing I didn't like was uh, the carpet in the front which is, I mean it's only three feet of carpet I didn't like it so uh, I changed that and that's the only thing that's been changed since since it was done what are you most proud of on the car what's your what's your favorite part Uh, the favorite part is actually something nobody ever notices, and uh, the Ford Econo line has external hinges, which are extremely ugly, and I wanted to get rid of them. So we put internal hinges on the car to get rid of the ugly ones. You have to see a you have to see a stock one to realize how terrible they are. A guy named Tim Condor did the paint. He's up in Sonoma, California. Uh, it's inspired by Larry Watson, who is an old uh, panel paint painter from the 60s uh, since passed uh, so the basically use the body lines to dissect the paint job and I wanted subtle colors so it wouldn't distract from all the custom touches that were done on the van I had ideas like I knew I wanted the panel paint I knew I wanted um, this uh, green tea metallic as the main color um, And I keep coming up with ideas, then he would come up with ideas, and then I flew up there one weekend and he had the car taped out and nailed it. Exactly what I wanted. And like these, like this, these are from a 1950 Pontiac. Oh, okay. The, the Ford ones don't have any chrome on it, it's just a disc. Mm -hmm. And then these bumpers were reshaped from 1970 Camaro. So oh. these took two 70 Camaro bumpers to make each rear bumper. And then the, it used to have a gas tank back here. Okay. And the gas set, that's all, all been flush. filled, yeah. all the body lines were filled. So no I can way. do prints, yeah, so, cool. so I can do prints, that's a logo I designed for wow. it. And then this is the gas tank and the battery and nice. oil. So to get these things low, this used to be down here. So we raised the inner fender wells about five inches, which means you lose about five inches of headroom. So that in turn meant we had to go with the low profile seat. And when the idea came up for the Eames potato chip chair, a mid-century modern interior went with a mid-century modern van. And then when you raise this, you also have to cut it all out of here. This is crazy. So like, One thing led to a bigger problem, led to a bigger problem. And then you can see in here, uh, the, the hinges were done. And Tim Condor, he's the one that figured out how to get the hinges inside as well. How comfortable is it? It's more comfortable than you'd think, but I do slide occasionally on a freeway off ramp. But I can go, I think like four hours at a time before I need to fill up with gas. So after four hours, I stretch the legs, fill it up and get back on the road again. 
Yeah, I did. I got pulled over going 90 in a 75 in the middle of nowhere in Texas, and he let me off with a written warning. So there's physical proof I was going 90, <laughs> which is good because the speedometer said I was going 110. So little, we had some bad math going on, but it's all right. So these are the magazines I make. Uh, so these are yours? Yeah, so I design these magazines. Um, a phot each photographer, I, I feature one photographer. They're just artsy. Uh, most of the photography is mine, um, but they're all themed. Like this is all photos I took in Japan. Dead End did this one. This is all photos I took in Texas. Um, but you can see why it was built to display this stuff. Um, and then these rods underneath on the headliner, I can hang my t-shirts off of these. And then there's also a flat file in the back so I can display art prints and stuff like that. That's from Japan. Yeah, these are all these are all Japanese customs, low riders. That one was a hot rod. But yeah, their their culture is amazing. This car just re completely has been redone. It's insane. He has leather inserts on the roof and he drives it. I, I mean they drive their cars. It's it's amazing out there. Absolutely amazing. How's the re reaction of the people on the road? It's it's good. A lot of smiles, but more often than not, they uh, they'll film with their phone, which makes them swerve, which makes me nervous. Yeah, they'll they they swerve trying to film, which makes me nervous. So especially, I have a I have a very large blind spot, so I'm extremely vigilant on the road when I'm driving this. I heard you also go for quite a distance with this car. Yeah, yeah, I've well, driven. It's not your daily driver, it's, right? No, it's not a daily driver, but um, I went to the dead end shows up in San Jose, California. I've been to Santa Maria five or six times, San Diego. And then the biggest trip is I drove it to Austin, Texas. This is 27 hours each way. Um, got a bunch of rock chips and cracked the front glass and it was the best trip of my life. That's a 63 model. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the future. What do you think of autonomous driving? This is right, <laughs> a this is right after a death, by the way. Um, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I'd rather my dad not drive. So if... Uh, uh, I think I would. I trust Elon Musk. <laughs> so... If he figures it out, yeah. I would do it. Um, I do have a little problem with everything going electric, even though I would drive an electric car. I, I believe wholeheartedly in the classics, so I need, I need petrol also to feed my passions. But I, I do understand the, the electric thing, and I, 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 I'll drive one eventually. It's just whether or not I'll build a custom with that's electric. Kobe, thank you so much. You bet, thank you. Thank you. And uh, they did a series of three. So they had the car when it was bone stock with the stock body lines, the stock interior, stock everything. And then they did one right before it was painted that's all primer gray. And then this is the final one. But everything that's been done to this has Whoa. been done to this. There's no hinges. It has the custom split bumpers. It has the Pontiac tail lights. It has my interior in here. Dude, this is so crazy. It's unbelievable the amount of detail they put in. Whoa.